What is up gamers? In this video, we are going to be going through each rank starting at bronze and working our way to grandmaster. We'll be going over the differences between these ranks to help you learn what to focus on going forward. Before we start though, if you want the best way to rank up as well as tons of in-depth guides on every single hero in the game, make sure you hop over to Game Leap where we are constantly updating the website, adding more guides and going in-depth into tons of different topics. So make sure you sign up over at GameLeap.com and get your subscription today so that you can easily rise through the ranks. All right, now let's talk about bronze. Bronze players lack just about everything that you could possibly want as an Overwatch player. Whether you're a brand new player or a casual player that's been playing for a while, if you are stuck in bronze, there are a few things that you can very easily improve upon that can make a big difference in your general gameplay. The first thing is your hardware. This might seem simple, but if you've been playing on a laptop from 15 years ago while you're laying on your bed and you're aiming with the trackpad, chances are you're not going to be winning any games anytime soon. To maximize your potential, you really, really want a decent setup. This is something that can get you anywhere from 50 to 60 FPS or even higher than that at a steady rate. You don't have to spend much money to get a laptop or a PC that can do this, but if you are constantly at a lower amount than 50 FPS, you're going to have a harder time aiming and seeing your enemies. Secondly, headphones or earbuds can easily help you pinpoint sounds and they can just overall improve your playing experience. And finally, you definitely are going to need a mouse to play Overwatch, although it isn't the most important thing to have a gaming mouse. You can get a really cheap gaming mouse from Logitech online. I would recommend that you go for the Logitech G403, the Logitech G305, or for an even cheaper option, you can go for the Logitech G203, which is like 15, 20 US dollars. Now that we can actually run the game, you wanna start fixing your settings, and instead of going over them in this video, you can check out our settings video that is going to be linked in the description and on the screen now. With all this done, you're now ready to hop into the game. The first thing you need to fix as a bronze player is yourself. The easiest and most simple and best way to improve as a bronze player, as well as just about any other rank in this game, is to start taking responsibility for everything. All you have to do is ask yourself a simple question while waiting to respond. Could I have done something differently there? Most of the time, the answer is going to be yes, and if you find yourself saying no a lot of the time, well, sorry to break it to you, but you're wrong. While questioning yourself is really, really good, you might not even know the answers of what did I do wrong or what could I have done differently there? And that is important. So understanding how to play the game is going to come by watching others play the game. Whether you're watching a streamer or a YouTube video of just some gameplay, what you really want to be doing when you're watching these streams or videos is you want to be looking at the role of the hero that you play. For example, if you love to play support, watch a support streamer and then just look at how they're positioning based off of their teammates positioning and look at the things that they do and the way that they play and then try and imitate these things in your own games. Over time, building on this knowledge is a really, really good way to easily learn positioning as well as some basic game sense. Silver is the time to understand all of the heroes in the game. You don't have to have a super in-depth understanding, but what I want you to do is go into either a quick play game or a custom game and then start playing one game of each hero. It might take a while, but understanding what every single hero's abilities do, as well as noting down how long or short their cooldowns are and how much damage that they do, you can get a really great understanding and just a basic understanding of how to actually play against these heroes. Every time you encounter a hero that you've never played before, you can really only guess from experience, the you know experience that you've had dueling them or them killing you all the time of how long their cooldowns are and what exactly they can do. So you'd be surprised at how much information that you're gonna get out of this and how much it's going to help you in the long run. If you wanna go super in depth with this topic, you can go to the Overwatch Wiki and look at the exact damage numbers and cooldown numbers of the heroes to give you a better understanding of how to duel them or escape from them. 
especially for heroes that you're going to play a lot, you want to go to the wiki and just check out their abilities and see if they have anything, you know, a little extra. For example, Cassidy has damage reduction as well as reload on his roll. And I don't really believe that anywhere in the game it tells you that. So it's really important that you're actually going a little more in depth into the heroes that you're playing. Gold is where you really need to start learning the basics of gameplay for Overwatch. I've recently played in gold and silver and the amount of times that I see people pushing up into the enemy spawn after winning a fight and then never backing away only to die and then lose the fight is incredible. At this rank, you have tons of things to work on, whether it's aim, awareness, target priority, positioning, playing around your teammates, learning when and why to flank, when to alt, tracking enemy alts, pressing tab to see when your teammates have alts. There's a countless number of things, but in these ranks to climb out of gold, you should really, really be focusing on one big thing and that is your positioning. Positioning is gonna be something that you can improve on in every single rank, but the easiest and most simple tip that I can give you for as a gold player is that just go and rewatch one of the replays from a recent game. Look at a bird's eye view straight down at each fight that's happening to get a good idea of every piece in that fight. Then look at where you're playing, identify one to three pieces of cover or high grounds nearby that you could instead be playing on and, you know, serving the exact same purpose. Then, once you know which pieces of cover you can easily play on, and this part is the most important, know when and where to retreat to. Once you get really good at identifying cover like this and playing on cover, when the enemies start to actually push into your team, whether you're losing a fight or the enemies are pushing towards the objective, you can't just stay on that piece of cover and hold your ground. You have to give it up and find a new piece of cover. So the basics here are just identifying cover and high grounds, then identifying to your retreat path to other pieces of cover. Next, we have Platinum. Platinum is going to be the age of trial and error. I believe many people are stuck in Platinum because they don't experiment enough. They learn how to play the game from other Platinum players or even lower ranks, and they never expand their knowledge on what might be better or what might work in different situations. I want you to start questioning everything you do in your games. Why am I flanking? Why did I just alt in a 2v5? Is my team near me? Where am I right now in relation to my team? Is it really necessary for me to be on Roadhog when I die every single fright from an anti-nade? Simple questions like this can easily spark your brain into realizing just how rigid you've been playing. Doing the same things over and over again might work to get you to Platinum, but if you're doing the things that get you to Platinum, they're not going to get you out of Platinum, so you have to expand on your knowledge all the time. The reason that Grandmaster players don't play or win games the same way as Platinum players is because we have hundreds of hours of experience questioning ourselves and improving on what we do over and over again instead of just doing the same thing and then being upset when it doesn't work. Other than questioning yourself, you should really be working on grouping up with your team and understanding the values of playing together as well as positioning nearby your teammates and knowing where your teammates are in most of the time. This involves comboing your ultimates or just flanking with your teammates. In this rank, communication can be very important as well as your attitude towards your teammates. If you get into a game and somebody just starts flaming off the back or they tell you that they've lost the last 10 games they played and they're going to make it 11 this one, this is really going to make you and your teammates not want to win the game. So, the nicer and more positive you are about winning games, and the more games you play like this, the more games you're going to win. The last thing you want to do to master Platinum and really escape Platinum is learning the map. Understand where you should be fighting in the maps during any given fight, and learn the flank routes as well as the retreating routes on all different maps. You should also know where all of the health packs are on most of the maps by this time, and by the time you hit Diamond, you really really need a good understanding of where to play and when to play during team fights. Diamond players are on the cusp of being great, but they're not quite there yet. The same issues that Platinum players have can easily transfer to Diamond, mainly the ability to question themselves and improve on their failures. In Diamond, it's time to start working on your general awareness of everything. You need to understand when to push and when to flank as well as when to retreat, but you should really be focusing on ultimates. Ultimate tracking in Overwatch 2 has been made much easier because of the scoreboard. You can check the enemy's damage and you know, note the damage before the fight starts and then after the fight ends and then 
if they got like 1000 or 2000 damage, you know that they're going to be close or already have their ultimate. Then you can use this knowledge to start playing around the enemy's ultimate, whether it's not standing directly in front of the Reinhardt or diving the enemy soldier when he has his ultimate so you can easily shut him down before he uses it. There's a ton of different ways that you can exploit this knowledge just by having it. You also want to start understanding hero matchups in more depth than at lower ranks. You want to start switching heroes a lot earlier when you realize that you're either hard countered or the enemy team is going to punish you for playing a certain hero. A good example is that if you're playing far and the enemy team comes out of spawn with Ana, Soldier, and Widowmaker, you're going to have a bad time. It's as simple as that. And after the first time you die, even if you're already close to your ultimate and have been doing well, it's going to be better to just swap off that hero because knowing when and where to swap and who to swap to is going to be the most important thing going forward as counters are going to be really common. Lastly, we're going to combine Grandmasters and Masters because these ranks can quite easily blend together. There's no fast tactic to rank up in these two ranks and it's all going to be genuine hard work and improvement. You want to be soaking up as much information about the game as possible and then learning how to implement that information into your gameplay. You should be training your aim often and warming up if the heroes that you play require that. Communication is also really important at this level of play. A simple game can be won or lost just by two or three people making callouts, calling out ultimates, positions, as well as making game plans. And if your team has no one doing that, Chances are you're just going to lose because of the cohesion that the enemy team has and they're going to be playing slightly better, they're going to be happier, they're going to be playing more together and that can be a simple difference in between you winning and losing games. Not to say that you have to talk or talk a lot, but almost always if you're just saying very simple things like tracer flanking or you know I'm being dove or monkey has ultimate he's going to jump on me, this can very easily change your teammates mindsets and how they play and very easily save you in certain fights and that can be the simple outcome or difference in a game. The last thing that you really really need to master when you're getting into these high ranks is your movement. It might be a very general term but it encompasses how you approach the enemies, how you dodge their shots, how you duel enemies, how you're going to you know go forward or backwards in a fight. There are tons of tiny different ways to improve your movement but at the highest level you really really need to be working on it because it can be the difference between you winning and losing a duel which can in turn change the whole outcome of the game. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you all for watching and if I missed anything make sure you tell me in the comments and I hope you have a wonderful day.